So Deuteronomy chapter 1, we'll get verse 34. Everybody there? So notice we're going to look at, here in Deuteronomy, a rehearsal of some commands given to Moses about the children of Israel not going into the promised land. Not the old generation, but the but the new generation will. Uh, so that's that's what we'll look at. And then <laughs> I had to get rid of the jacket. And then Moses, Moses, uh, he's not going either. Uh, just Caleb and Joshua and all the younger generation will go. But I want to. Here's what I want to do this tonight. I want to look at why Moses is not going. And what it means that he's not going. And what it doesn't mean. So, let's just start verse 34. <clears throat> and the Lord heard the voice of, of your words and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation uh, see that good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers. Uh, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon and to his children because he hath uh, wholly followed the Lord. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. But Joshua the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which he said should be a prey, <clears throat> and your children, which in in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. So we'll see that we'll see some we're seeing some that's not going to go, and we're seeing some that will go. This all goes back. Part of this story goes back to where they sent in ten spies. Uh, or yeah, twelve or twelve spies into uh, into the land of Canaan, and they come back carrying a cluster of grapes on their shoulder. Two men did, but they also come back with an evil report. They said the sons of Anakim, Anakim is there, and they're giants, and we can't. There's no way we can defeat the land. You know, the people of the land are too too strong for us. It's too mighty for us. <clears throat> so they give that report, but Josh and Caleb, they said, yes, we can. Uh, so that's the reason why Josh and Caleb is able to go into the land. Now there was a whole different, uh, we'll look at Moses. What I, I want to look at Moses tonight. A whole different reason why he's not going into the land. And we'll look at that reason why he's not going. It had nothing to do with that. The ten, the, the twelve, or the ten spies that, that spoke evil, gave an evil report. Uh, it had to do with a whole different story. But what I want to look at Moses is that yes, it meant what he did was wrong. It meant that he's not going into the promised land. Yet there is something that Moses will be able to do uh, that the that the rebellion didn't stop him from being able to do that. And that's what I want to look at tonight. And also with us. So basically what I want to do tonight is look at this message and and kind of look kind of gear it toward this, look at it toward this this direction is that we as a Christian, you know, Moses was a he was a man of God. He was he belonged to the Lord. He was Lord, he was the Lord's man. He messed up, he rebelled, he made mistakes, yet he got to do something. You and I as a Christians, as Christians tonight, we're going to make mistakes. We're not going to walk perfectly with the Lord. Yet the Lord has made a promise. And so that's what I'll look at tonight. Uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. So let's pray and then we'll get into this. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just want to thank you for this uh, day, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Let's pray that as you, Lord, as you've given me this study, Lord, that you just allow me to be able to present it to the church tonight, Lord. As we look at it, Lord, we... Uh, we thank you for all that you do, Lord. We thank you for what you've done. And Lord, I just pray that tonight, Lord, that you would teach us. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Can't do anything without thee, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you speak to every person, Lord, that makes up the congregation tonight. 
And thank you for the, this morning, Lord. Thank you for the service and, and all those that came out this morning, Lord. I pray that you continue to be with them, Lord. Allow them to take the message, Lord, that was preached this morning and apply it to their lives, Lord. And, and Lord, now as we study the, the life of Moses right here, Lord, and we look at, uh, Lord, the fact that he didn't gather, uh, he didn't go to the promised land, but he gathered with his people, Lord. Let's pray that you teach us. Lead God, direct us. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so, so notice that, he, you know, I want you to look at this in verse 37, uh, Deuteronomy one thirty-seven. Also, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes. So the Lord, so right there Moses said, hey, the Lord, the Lord, is, he was angry with me. Oh, <clears throat> and so Moses had discouraged the Lord. And, uh, but I want to show you all this. Let's go back over here to Numbers chapter 20. And we'll kind of see what Moses, this is what Moses did. In Numbers chapter 20, <clears throat> hold your spot in Deuteronomy 1. We'll look at that here in just a minute again. But <clears throat> in Numbers chapter 20, now notice there was water. The congregation needed some water, right? Look at verse 2. So Numbers 20, verse 2. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Uh, so you can see that they was in need of water. They was in the wilderness. They was thirsty. It was a big crowd. Uh, and of course, every time they went without, they was without uh, food, without meat. They come against Moses and Aaron. Now they without water. They come against Moses and Aaron. This is the second time they was without water. First time Moses took a tree and threw it in the water and it became it was bitter water made sweet because of the tree. This time he's going to smoke the rock and uh or actually this is yeah, there was there was this is another time. But anyway, there's a couple times. Uh, this time there was without uh water and Moses was going to strike the rock. Actually this this will be the second time this happens that he brings water out of a rock. Oh, uh, and then let's just get on down there. So they, they're, they're arguing. Uh, look on, let's see, where is that? Verse, verse 8, or actually verse 7. Everybody there? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts to drink. Uh, so notice notice that was the command. All Moses had to do, y'all see that, was speak to the rock, right? And as a result of him speaking to the rock, the rock would give forth water. Now watch this. Look at verse 9. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. So everything's right up to this point. He's done everything. He, he brought the congregation together, got the rod. He got everything. Everything's going well. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. But look what he says right here. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? <clears throat> Nothing about... He didn't tell the congregation the Lord is bringing water out of this rock. He says we meaning him and Aaron. Now watch watch what he does here. Not only did he say as must we, but notice what in verse 11, and Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also. Now Paul's there. So now the Lord gave the commandment. He didn't say nothing about smote the rock, did he? He just said speak to the rock. Right? Also, he didn't. We noticed that Moses said, "Must we bring water forth out of the rock?" And so, so notice, notice what's now. Notice how the Lord took this thing in verse twelve. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, "Because ye believe me not, to sanctify in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation to the land which I have given them." So there's, there it is. That's where he offended. So that's where Moses and Aaron offended the Lord. They didn't separate 
the Lord from themselves. In other words, it's, it's in a sense, they took the credit for themselves of bringing the water out of the rock. They didn't, they didn't sanctify the Lord in this situation. right? They didn't give the Lord credit. It angered the Lord. Uh, <clears throat> and so therefore, that was, that was a promise. He, he, the Lord made them a promise right then and there. You and Aaron, you're not going. You're not going to take this, this, this children of Israel in the land of, land of promise, land of Canaan. Now we do know that he was promised that he would see the land. Moses was given that promise. And we'll look at that in just a minute. He was, he was given a promise that, hey, you're going to see it. You'll behold it with your eyes, but you will not. You're not going to enter into it. All, and it all goes back to right there, Numbers chapter 20, right there where he smoked the rock twice. He didn't do what the Lord completely said. And, it's, and the Bible says because he believed them not. He, he believed the Lord not. Uh, it was, so it was an act. So what here, right here is what this was, was an act of unbelief on Moses and Aaron's part. Uh, and it's kind of interesting, right, that, that sometimes you and I, when we rebel, that's an act of unbelief. Uh, so, so back over to Deuteronomy chapter one. So that's and it's it's this is what the this is what Moses said about it. He says in verse thirty seven. He said, "The Lord was angry with me for your sakes, uh, why, and to the point of this, thou shalt thou also shall not go in thither." But he didn't. But the Lord didn't stop the whole nation of Israel from going. He didn't punish the whole the whole bunch of them for that one incident. Uh, he did let them go, but it just wasn't Moses that brought them in. Moses had to, he had to, he got to see, but he didn't go, he get to go in. And then that's when he says, verse 38, but Joshua the son of Nun, which stands before thee, he shall go in thither. But notice this, what Moses tells the congregation there, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. So, <clears throat> so Moses so what Moses is doing, basically what the whole book of Deuteronomy is, he's, he's, it's kind of a rehearsal book in a sense. He's preparing the nation of Israel to encourage Joshua to follow Joshua and Joshua will be the one to lead them into the promised land. Joshua is going to be the one that, that is going to lead them victorious in battle after battle after battle. There's going to... Talk about go to war. And they're fixing to go to war. When Moses dies and Joshua, uh, when he, he steps up, as a matter of fact, Bible, the Lord tells him, be courageous. Uh, in a, and that, in a sense of this, it's, it's, it's time now. It's time. They didn't just go into this. This promised land was not just handed to them as in a sense of the inhabitants just walked away from it. No, these are the inhabitants of the land fixing to put up a fight. They're fixing to, they're not going to go down without a fight. But... The Lord wins the fight, Amen. The Lord, He 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 just, He does the, all the just like the 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 walls of Jericho, just like Jericho. You know, very first city, they they marched around that thing seven times, and they kept marching seven day and the, the seven day marched around it seven times, and the wall fell down flat. Y'all, the Lord give that land to them, and they defeated it. But uh, <clears throat> but nonetheless, Moses didn't get to go, all because it goes back to where he. Instead of speaking to the rock, instead of sanctifying the Lord and, and giving credit to the Lord that the Lord was the one that brought forth the water out of the rock, Moses said, shall we bring water forth out of this, this rock? And so he took the credit upon himself. He smoked the rock. And then as a result of that, we find Moses now encouraging Joshua and the children of Israel that y'all must go. Uh, you, and, and, and so you say, well, <clears throat> that's pretty disappointing, right? It's got to be. Hey, I imagine it is, because all this time here, Moses been been there. He went into Egypt with them, and ten plagues. He brought them out and through through the Red Sea, and and watched uh, Pharaoh's army drown. And I mean, all the and he went up to the the Mount Moriah and, and took and got the Ten Commandments and went down. And there was the idol, and he and all that had to be straightened out and grinded the the, the idol and made them eat it. And uh, and then he went back up and got the Ten Commandments again and. And then he said, and all the 40 years, imagine 40 years with these people in the wilderness. It's what Moses was. He was 40, he stayed there 40 years with these people to bring them to the land to right here to this point. And like, okay, oh, it's, it's time for Joshua to, 
take charge. And, you know, so I, I'm sure, I'm almost positive that this was kind of a disappointment to Moses. Positive about that. But here's something I find. This is, this is what brings, this is, this is a, this is what brings me comfort about this because, because I'm like Moses, you're like Moses. Man, we've messed up. We've made mistakes as, as being a child of God. Maybe perhaps there's been some times the Lord's not very happy with us. We should have done things differently, right? Uh, he said, you know, there's times I wasn't very pleasing to the Lord. And, and uh, maybe there's been some times that you could have done more for the Lord, but as a result of rebellion or a result of not going all the way, the Lord, you know, you kind of didn't do what you wanted to and it didn't work out like you planned. It was, it was your fault, not the Lord's fault. You know, God had set it up for you and, and because of rebellion, you messed up. And that's kind of where Moses is. He, it was set up for him. If he wanted to, he could have led the children of Israel right on into the land of Canaan, fought the battles with them, but it was kind of his own fault that he didn't go. Uh, he couldn't blame God. It wasn't God's fault. Like people do today, blame it was God's fault that this didn't work out like it should have. No, he couldn't say it's God's fault. He couldn't point his finger at God. It was his fault. He's the one that chose to do the way he did with the water, at, you know, with striking the rock twice with the rod and, and not sanctifying the Lord and saying, hey, we must we, we fetch water out of the rock. It was his own fault. And a lot of the times it's our own fault why. God can't do all with us what He desires to do with us, but there's but but here's something that brings me brings me joy tonight that no matter how much you fail, no matter how much you rebel or how much if you're if you're born again in here tonight you've been born again you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior you've you've got a relationship with Christ you're on your way to heaven you're going to heaven you're uh, as some say as brother Adam you say you're you're heaven bound with a hammer down Amen. Uh, and then there's another saying, you couldn't go to hell if you wanted to. Amen? Because you're saved. You've been sealed until the day of redemption. There's no one doing that. It's not, but that doesn't mean you're going to make every decision perfect. It doesn't mean you're going to make every right decision. But there's good news tonight. Moses messed up, no doubt. He made a mistake, no doubt. He didn't get to do the full potential of what the Lord wanted him to do, no doubt. But here's the good news. Let's go, I'll show you this good news. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I like this. In verse 48, Deuteronomy 32, 48. Now, is this a message to just encourage you to, to go ahead and fail and make mistakes because you're going to get this blessing anyway? No, I'm not saying that either. I think we should live this Christian life to our full potential. I think we should do all that we can do for the Lord Jesus Christ because He saved us. But what I want us to know is because of our failures and our mistakes and the things and our setbacks, y'all... It doesn't undo this. Look what he says in verse 48. <clears throat> Everybody there? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 48. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain Abram, unto Mount Nebo, <clears throat> which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. So there's his promise. He said, Hey, I promise you that you'll be able to see the land you can't go into it. But watch this. <clears throat> Verse 50. And die in the mount whether thou goest up. Here it is right here. And be gathered unto thy people. As Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor and was gathered unto his people. Huh. So, here's, so here's the good news tonight. You're in Christ. You're saved. You've been born again. It may, you know, like Moses, he messed up. He couldn't do to God's full potential down here. But it didn't stop him from being gathered with his people. You know, that's the good news tonight, that no matter what we do down here, if you're in Christ, you, y'all, there's going to come a day that you and I are going to be gathered with our people. And, and, and it doesn't matter from, from the time that you got saved, the time that you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, from that time forward, Failures, mistakes, setbacks, it doesn't matter. That's not going to keep you at the day of death from being gathered with the people that went on before us, the Christians. And so that's, <laughs> this is, that's some good news to me. That is, that's such good news. Notice what he says in verse 51. 
because ye transpa- trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Merib- Meribah, Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. So, <clears throat> so, so it's clear. Moses trespassed against the Lord. Right? Yet, that trespass did not keep him from being gathered to his people. And so that's the good news tonight. The good news tonight is that uh, sin, because of sin, yes, there comes death. Physical death is here because of sin. You and I are going to die physically. Unless the rapture takes place, we're going to the grave. We're going the way the way of the grave is that's that's coming. Uh, some younger than older, but but nonetheless, we're going that that's the way we're going. We're going to that grave. Uh, and just like Moses did. Moses was was uh, he died there on that mount and he and he left this place. But here's the good news about it. This is the greatest news that I can give y'all tonight, and the greatest news I, I can find in the Bible is that when this heart quits beating, when this soul leaves this body, death and the grave is not a final resting place. It's not the end all, uh, and, and, and we're just going to go, you know, as, a, as the saying is, you know, there's a, everybody that dies today, everybody, I don't care who it is, it's every single person that dies today, there's a, there's a, a saying that the whole world gives to them, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Y'all, here's, there's, there's a problem with that. Here's, here's the problem with that. If a person is lost, he don't know Jesus as his Lord and Savior or her, they've never been saved, I hate to break the heart of the people that's left behind, but if they don't know Jesus, there's no resting in peace. And if you do know Jesus, if you are saved, you've been born again, Although there is, there's peace and there's resting, y'all, but it ain't, it ain't soul sleep. It ain't body sleep. It ain't a period of time to where you're waiting in that grave and nothing happens for thousands of years and finally you come up. Uh, it's absent from the body and it's present with the Lord for those that are in Christ. <laughs> uh, and I, I do say that lightly about that resting in peace, you know, those that don't know Jesus, because that's a really a sad state to be in. It's sad. It's a horrible state, uh, but it's a wrong. It's wrong to to address that to people. Just rest in peace. When I when I die, you know, folks, say, I'll rest in peace when I die. But they live in an ungodly, selfish uh, lifestyle of however they please, apart from Christ. And they says it don't matter because I'm going to rest in peace anyway. One day I can do what I want, how I want. <laughs> Boy, what a deception! Um, so death, so he died, verse 50, he died, and the Bible says there's something after death in verse 50, and be gathered unto thy people. That is, so to be gathered unto his people, Moses was going to be gathered with his people after death, which means you and I today, we're going to be gathered to our people after death. <laughs> it's good news. And uh, so that brings me this. That right there brings me to this. Let's go way up here in the New Testament because I want to show y'all this in in, in First Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter four. <clears throat> here's here's a good, here's a something. You say you know something. You said might say, well, brother Aaron, we're going. Well, we know people up there. We're going to. Who are we going to be gathered? Who are we going to be gathered with? In First Thessalonians chapter four, everybody there. Verse thirteen. Now notice, I don't know how long ago it's been. It seemed like it was not long ago we we actually preached on these prayers. Oh, uh, these. But you know what verse eighteen says? Look at verse eighteen real quick. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Yeah, amen. So that means you can comfort. You preach on this all the time, right? Amen. It's his comfort one another. So there is comfort. You find comfort in the Scriptures. Now, these Scriptures have something to do with a departure. Watch this. Look at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Alright, if you're trying to figure out asleep, what does he mean by those that are asleep? 
Well, if I when we when we go to bed tonight, there's no sorrow over sleeping, is there? So he's talking about death right there. So concerning them which are sleeping, you remember he said Lazarus sleepeth, the young girl sleepeth, and I go awake her, and they laughed him to scorn, and then so Jesus sent them all out of the room, and and the parents was there with him, and and uh, and Peter and John was there with him, and he raised, he told the the little girl come, you know, to raise the little girl from the dead. But he said she was sleeping, so they'll sleep. Those that are asleep, those that are in the grave, those that are dead, those that went on before us. Now, who are you going to sorrow about? Who are you going to sorrow for? Your people, obviously. We're not sorrowing for strangers, are we? I mean, you see, I, I, it, is, it is heartbreaking to read the paper or see on the news that someone lost someone they love dearly. Yes, that's heartbreaking, but the sorrow is toward those that we knew dearly, that we loved dearly. That's... That is our people. Our people. The people that have gone on before us. They left before us. Sorrow not for those people, the Bible says. Why? Even as others which have no hope. For verse 14 says this, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that is the death and the burial, right? And the resurrection. Jesus, He died he, and He rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, so there's that in Christ, in Jesus, will God bring with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Here it is together with them in the class. So so one day, so just as so Moses, man, he made a mistake, he messed up, he tres, trespassed against the Lord, his his ministry was not perfect, his walk with the Lord was not perfect. But good news, he was gathered with his people, same way with you and I. Look, we're not going to do everything perfect down here. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. But here, rest assured though, like I said a while ago, we're sealed under the day of redemption. And, and mark it down, as good as we're in Christ right now, at the day of the rapture when this, this, this event takes place, just as Moses was gathered with his people, you and I are being gathered with our people. It's going to be a gathering. Which kind of tells me this too. He said Aaron was gathered to his people. It tells me this too. I'm 100% certain that we'll know who we are up there. Although we'll, we may not carry that title anymore. I won't be Corey's husband anymore. She won't be my wife anymore. Because there's no, you know, he says there's no marriage in heaven. You know, remember Jesus when they, the Pharisees come to him and, and talking about a woman that had. Uh, I think she had seven husbands or something like that. I can't remember. And one brother married her and he died and another brother married And they said, whose wife will she be when, when she gets up to heaven? And he says, no marriage in heaven. Now that's hard to comprehend, but there's not. We're, it's, 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 we're going to be brothers and sisters in Christ, not a marriage in heaven. That's, not, that's an earthly thing, not a heavenly thing. Matter of fact, the heavenly marriage in heaven, we are the bride of Christ as a church and the wedding that will take place is that the the father will hand the hand the groom off to the bride, and we're the bride of Christ. So it'll be like a marriage like that. But I don't don't get me to explain that. That's a mystery, <laughs> amen. Uh, but the Bible says so. Uh, but that's but but far as you and I, you know, all you married couples in here, y'all that till death do us part. Death takes place part. There's no. It's it's that's the end of marriage. And uh, I know that breaks some of y'all's heart in here. Man, I want to be married to this woman all for eternity. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, can't happen, right? Uh, no, 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 no comment over there. But, uh, but anyway, uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, the Bible says we will be gathered together. Amen. We'll be, we'll be. Together, we'll be we'll live for all eternity. A thousand years with the Lord is one day, and one day is a thousand years. And I believe the first day is like the the you know the thousand years would be like the first day. We'll, we'll be there for all eternity with each other 
lifting our songs of praise unto the one that saved us, the one that bought us, the one that died for us, the one that shed his blood for us. He's the one that's that deserves all the praise, honor, glory. Uh, we'll see him one day on this earth get crowned as king. Amen. Uh, on the throne of David, I can't wait to that day. Uh, but but think about this. So there's that gathering together uh, with the people of God. Now there's another set of scriptures I really like that goes with this. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. I'll go there. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter fifteen. And you might say, well, Brother Aaron, where we're we at in this thing? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. I don't know how close we are. I can tell you this though, out of scripture, look at this out of scripture. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. And verse fifty one. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So Paul's saying that the church, he's speaking to the church, to the Gentiles, the believers in Christ, we shall not all sleep. He's, so at some point during the age of grace, during the church period, at some point, I don't know when it is, we're going to get out of here. Not every, not every church, some period, some time, we're, we're getting out of here. Yeah, it could be, it could be a hundred years from right now. It could be, it could be ten days. It could be, I don't know, it could be at midnight tonight. We, we don't know. We simply do not know when this is going to take place, but we do know this. Not, not, <laughs> we know by what Paul says that not all, we shall not all sleep. But here's the promise but we shall all be changed. We're not all going to sleep. In other words, we're not all going to go the way of death, the grave, buried. But there is a promise that we'll all be changed. So that, what he's talking about, here's what he's talking about. And I know he, he says it, he, he explains a little bit. So if the Lord was to rapture us right now, right this minute, Everybody in this building will be changed. All of us that's in Christ, we will be changed right then and there. All the, the graves, all those that's in Christ will come up out of the graves and be changed. Everybody gets changed. But of course, we didn't sleep. They did, we didn't, right? Kind of get that? All right, notice this. Verse 52. <clears throat> in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, how fast can you twinkle your eye? <laughs> and the twinkling of eye will be that's how fast we'll be changed. You know, so that that does away with this this all this folks saying I'll get right at the last minute. You can't get right at the twinkling of an eye. It's too fast. <laughs> Especially when you don't know when it's gonna take place. Right? I mean, there's this Matter those that ain't right with the Lord, those that's not in Christ, those that have rejected Christ, y'all, they're going to be standing before in front of. If it, if the rapture was to take place tonight, they'd be standing. They're having a conversation with a saved individual. They're gone. Too late. You can't get right in the twinkling of an eye. It's it's you try. You know what the loss is going to be? They're going to try to figure out what the world happened to them. What. <laughs> Of course, is you know CNN, NBC, MNSBC, or whatever Fox News, and all these. Could you imagine all the news networks have all this explanation of why everybody disappeared? The aliens took them, <laughs> right? And they're coming up with all these sci-fi movies and all this about people disappearing and all that. And just, the aliens took them; they just disappeared. But that's exactly what's the rapture. That's exactly what takes place during the rapture. Folks just disappear. I mean, that's, could you imagine? Just disappear. Just, just, just gone. Just whoop, out of here. Uh, it doesn't matter. Hey, Lord ain't going to say, hey, pull that, pull that bus over so I can get you out of here. Uh, pull that 18 wheeler over. Pull all them vehicles over so I can get you out of here. You know, here's, here's the thing, too. Here's a, here's a, here's a, um, the whole world at, at the moment, at the twinkling of an eye, every Christian across the globe will go up. We that are alive first, dead in Christ, or dead in Christ first, 
then we which are alive and remain will catch up with them. But the world, the whole world at one time, what is the it's daylight here? What's the world under us? You know what they're doing on the other side of this world. They're sleeping right now, y'all. When the Lord, when the rapture takes place, somebody is going to be going on with normal activities, right? Somewhere in this world is going to be going on with normal activity. That means that there's going to be normal operations during the day when the rapture takes place. That's going to be chaos if you get if if all the Christian a lot of Christians go up and they're in their regular activities, especially whatever they're doing, includes operating some equipment or machinery of some sort. I mean, could you imagine? Uh, catastrophic. catastrophic, yes. And so all the whole world goes in chaos trying to figure out what happened to people. Why did they disappear? I know that sounds that sounds like a something out of a fiction movie, right? But this is this is truth. This is this is this is biblical truth tonight. That one day the rapture is going to take place. Folks will disappear. Oh, uh, and left behind movies. Some of them just a little bit far fetched. A little bit, you know, this morning two and three. I mean, one was pretty good, but you get to watching the second one and third one. They like they took it way too far. But anyway, it's not here or there. Uh, where are we at? So verse fifty two again. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So the dead in the grave, they raised incorruptible. Now the incorruptible means that the body doesn't consume, right? The bones are not consumed. So they'll be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Verse 53, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. There's the the real immortals, <laughs> not not all these you know the the superheroes, the immortal. They, they, they try to make movies about y'all. We're going to be immortal one day. I don't mean to break anybody's heart about Spider Man and Superman and and Iron Man and all that. But anyway, Im- <laughs> immortal people, y'all. We're going we're going to be immortal one day. Amen. It's right there. Immortality. We shall the mortal shall put on or must put on immortality. Here's the good news, verse fifty four. So when so that's the time frame. When I don't know when it's going to happen. Nobody does. When this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then t h e n place and time, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up. In victory. Amen. So Moses died and was gathered to his people. If we die, we'll be gathered to our people. But one day, them bones will come up out of that tomb and they'll reunite with that soul that done went on before it. It'll be changed. It'll be made incorruptible. Them bones will be made incorruptible. God will put on brand new flesh. I don't know how. It's just a mystery. But y'all, death... At that point, swallowed up in victory. Now, Jesus defeated death on the cross. Yet, right now, people still die. Right? So it's not it's it's been defeated, but it still reigns in a sense. It still comes and robs from our families. Death still visits. But there's coming a day. When we'll be able to say this, verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Now the grave that has the victory is what the world says today. Well, they, they're, they're in the graves. That's their final resting place. That would be given the grave victory. When those bones, when that body comes up out of that grave, that you can say then, where is the victory, grave? Right? You didn't hold on to it. Amen. You couldn't keep the body down. Just like it didn't keep Jesus in the grave, the death could not keep him. Death can't keep these can't keep us when we buried. It won't keep us. Oh, uh, now watch this. Verse fifty-six: <clears throat> The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So where is the victory at? 
through Jesus Christ. Why now? How is it possible that even though we can we can we can fail right? We can fail in this ministry. We can fail at our walk with Christ. We can fall out of fellowship. We can mess up, and make mistakes. But how in the world can we still be gathered with our people through Christ? <laughs> He's defeated death because we're in Christ. Amen. Now I ain't this like I said. Let me go back now. I ain't, I'm not. This is not. This is not a message. Just to tell you tonight. Just go do what you want and live how you please because you're going to heaven anyway. And there's nothing of the sort. It's a message of even though you mess up, you make mistakes, you trespass against the Lord. If you're saved, my friend, we'll be gathered with the people. Amen. We're, we've got a place in heaven waiting for us. We do. All those that are in Christ, you got a you got a place for you, Amen. <laughs> Not only do we got a place in heaven waiting for us, but we got a seat at the table, at the Master's table. One day we'll be seated down, we'll be able to eat with Jesus Himself. Won't that be fat? That be that's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. One day we'll be able to see one another. I'm telling y'all, there'll be no separation anymore. Oh, uh, we'll all be together. Matter of fact. I'll make this prediction. No matter if the rapture, I can make this prediction or not. I'm, and I can almost I can get it ninety eight percent right. From one hundred years from right now, we're all gonna be in glory one day. All of us that are saved. I hope you're saved. I hope everybody in here is saved, amen. But a hundred years from this point right now, unless Angelie lives to be over a hundred, because she's the youngest one in here, y'all we're gonna be in heaven one day. I think that's a fair prediction to make. And if the rapture comes, we'll be before that. Some of us, some of us, y'all some going to be there before that. You know, we're looking at some people in the room that, y'all, and we don't know who, who's in this room, but before that, we're going to be there. Amen? Uh, but nonetheless, or nevertheless, <laughs> isn't it good to know that you and I will be gathered to our people? Uh, this is this great news. Amen. Gives me hope. Gives me confidence. Tells me that I'm serving a great Savior. Oh, and and this ain't the end all. Another way, another place that waits on us. I can't wait to be. But I'm just be honest with y'all. I'm ready now. If the Lord was to call me home, I, I'm like you know like Moses. He didn't go get to go to the promised land, but he got to be gathered with his people. I mean, hey, I mean, you can't to be gathered with it's a, my grandpa, my dad, my grandma, my son. I mean, bring me home, amen. I mean, it's a, hey to be gathered with with my people, amen. That's hey, uh, tell you, it'd be better up there than down here. But I, I mean, I don't want to leave my kids. You know, I gotta, I gotta stay down here and record and give her a hard time. So, so, but anyway. Yeah, amen. So, uh, but I'm just saying, you know, hey, if Lord was, you know, hey, wouldn't, wouldn't be that all that bad of a deal to, to be gathered with your people tonight, you know? Just saying, you know, hey, I'm like grandma. My grandma used to say this. I hope we get raptured out of here. We don't have to go to another funeral. We just go on home. A whole bunch of us. Yeah. That, that'd be even better. Oh, but anyway. But nonetheless, we're waiting. We're, we're going to be patient. We're going to wait. And one day, uh, we're going to be gathered to <clears throat> her people and gathered to our Savior. Amen.